Mom, the influencers are in town. The Canpie Pandas are here, and I'm about to head to their event in two hours. It's five o'clock. The event starts at six. I'm going to go at seven. It's five minutes walking distance from where I live down here in the downtown, and I'm very excited for this event. Canpie Pandas, a NFT event company, first event ever in Las Vegas. Where have we heard that before? That's right, I've gone to a handful, but I think this might be the best token-gated NFT event that's hit Las Vegas, and I'm about to tell you why. So here we go. Can Pie Pandas, Pandemonium, Tyga, Rich the Kid, and many, many more. You could see here the event starts in 42 minutes. That's right, I'm giving you a sneak peek right before we go down. The Downtown Event Center. I've been to many, many events at the Downtown Center throughout my life, at least over 50. Um, it's a very big space. I'm excited to see what's about to happen. Big party, 100% free for all Panda owners. You can see here, Tiger, Rich the Kid, Diaro, Dr. Fresh, Keyboard Monkey. I'm excited for that big NFT influencer who has been hyping up this event very hard. This event has been going all throughout crypto and NFT Twitter. I think we're going to see a lot of our favorite crypto influencer celebrities and degenerates uh, pop up throughout the night. So downtown event center, you can see here, it's a huge venue, the VIP tickets, which is a bunch that I bought. And this is the general admission area. And then the VIP lounge, big stage grass. The drinks are absolutely massive there for $24. You'll see when I get there, but wow, the best hidden secret in Las Vegas. You can see the gallery here, are the two tickets, GA and VIP pass, which are both actual NFTs. And you can see here, there's 2000 VIP passes. They're selling for literally 0.012 ETH, which is what, 16 bucks, 20 bucks at the time of this recording. And then the GA passes are selling for even less, which is 883 items, which is $8. So how freaking exciting for that. They're throwing events there uh, with some friends. This venue can hold upwards of 10,000 people or more. Throwing some excision events there uh, with some friends and help them put uh, things on together. Very, very excited. And as we go through the website, you could see the after party is from 1 to 7 a.m. at Dre's After Hours. Not to be confused with Dre's Nightclub that is above Cromwell. Dre's After Hours is down in the basement and is the best after party club in Las Vegas. It's been around Vegas for probably close to 20 years now at this point. Um, it's the best after hours club that exists here in Las Vegas. And when I say that it's been hitting a lot of influencers, it's been hitting a lot of influencers. So we got Keyboard Monkey uh, is spinning today in two hours. It sets at 9.45 to 10.30. I'm most excited to that to see what kind of music he's about to throw down. Gainzy was down at Hakkasan yesterday with the Can Pie Pandas, as you can see on there. We've got Anon's voice, who is going to be at Pandemonium. It is going to be Pandemonium, I think. I mean, there's only 3,000 NFT tickets that are available for a 10,000-person venue. That is quite small. I don't know if they're passing out other tickets um, on the outside or mint or selling them um, as just regular uh, paper or e-ticketing. We'll see once we get there, but they've been doing a lot of promotion here. They're using token proof, which is really cool. It's a system, which I'll show you, that you don't have to... Uh, bring your MetaMask wallet with you. You just verify it through token proof. They scan a QR code and it verifies all of the tickets or all of the NFTs in your wallet that pertain to the certain type of token gated event. This was token proof was used at 8Fest and it's been growing like absolutely crazy this year in 2022. As you can see, they have a lot of DJs, Tyga and Rich the Kid. I think this is going to be a really good event. And you can see here, that they're even interviewing at one of the local Las Vegas podcast studios. And uh, you guys, I'm, I'm just ready for this. I'm excited. I'm ready to party. Haven't started drinking yet, but I will be here pretty shortly because we're going to celebrate the pandemonium as they take over Las Vegas and as Las Vegas becomes an NFT capital. I'll see you guys there. So we just left my apartment. I'm now with the homies. We had to stop at Taco Terra Inn. So excited. Take a look at these. <laughs> Ooh, all vegan. And we're about five minute walk 
from the event from seeing the pandemonium. Pandemonium. Oh my god, I'm drunk. You guys wanted me to get trashed. Left, left, left. So we're gonna see KBM. It's 9:15. We're pushing it, and we'll see you guys there. He's about to come on, so we'll see. So apparently, we're not allowed to be up here, even with VIP tickets, but we're hanging out with all the homies. Pretty dope. So this is my friend Dom. This is his first ever NFT. So it's 2 a.m. and the ticket tells us that we can go to Trace After Hours from 1 to 7 a.m. And uh, we're gonna test that theory. The concert, and, yeah, Trace After Hours. Going down to Dre's, they almost didn't let us in, but uh, guess what? Hey. Homie's coming in. Hey, they're gonna, hey. Hey, they're gonna let us in, we're with the cat daddy. First time, first time. Yeah, I just wanna win. Yeah, LABB who we running with. Yeah, two, two, three, three. I'm on. We made it to the after hours. It's two thirty. We'll see what happens. Bags on big bags coming. Uh huh, coming in. Yeah, flex. I just wanna win. Yeah, LABB who we running with. Yeah. What a crazy experience Pandemonium was. Uh, I do have to give a round of applause to the Canpai Panda team for throwing that event. That was definitely the best production value NFT event that I've seen. And on top of that, the after party at Dre's After Hours was pretty intense, pretty crazy. I didn't get home till almost 7 a.m. And the time that I left that crazy basement, the sun was already out. So it reminded me a lot of that Vegas feel that I grew up in, 
the nightlife, the clubbing, the networking, the crazy times. It reminded me a lot of that. So I want to take a little bit of a review to talk about the overall event of, of what I thought. The event at Downtown Event Center, I think the venue may have been a little bit too large and that venue holds about 10 to 15,000 people. And I would say at most there was maybe 800 to 1200 people there at most at any given time. So it looked very, very empty. And you can see throughout the video that it felt like nobody was there, but most people were actually in the VIP area up in the cabanas. When I went up there with the VIP wristband, there was food, people had bottle service, people were out partying, people were very friendly. This is something that I noticed that was much different from the past events where the VIPs and those that were in GA were actively communicating with each other. They were having a good time. They were smiling. Traditionally in the Las Vegas clubs and NFT events and events where uh, wealth is defined through your tickets, it becomes very segregated. It becomes very old school of like, you know, the guys are on the left, the girls are on the right, or people don't want to have fun with each other. But I did not get that feeling at all. It just felt very, very empty. And to me, that took away a, a, from a lot of the experience. It made it hard to get into the rhythm of the performers because there is no one around you. And yes, that gives you a lot of fun. There gives you a lot of room to dance, but it felt like the vibe was off the entire time. And it felt more of like a mixer and a networking event than an actual party. But the, the, the props were insane. The activations were nuts. There were dancers, there were music musicians, there is, were performers, there was all, all kinds of stuff. I know the team probably put a lot of money into this. I highly doubt they made it back, but it does seem like there's an active community there. From the three or four events that I've been to so far, I would say this is probably the best put together. And it felt like a crypto event. There was uh, a lot of crypto influencers there, investors, traders, creators, builders, etc. It was hyped all over Twitter and in the discords. And I got to network with a handful of them. And it, it felt to me like this is the beginning of something special, not for just Can Pie Pandas, but for Las Vegas, because Las Vegas seems to be over and over again, the choice and the selection to throw the events. Because once again, Vegas is the entertainment capital and it's moving to the experience capital. So shout out to the team and Pandemonium for throwing a good event. Maybe go a little bit smaller on uh, the venue size or try to allocate it properly. I heard on the back end that because they had some hip hop performers, they weren't allowed to sell tickets because everything was only scanning tickets. You could only scan the NFT ticket and it actually worked this time um, compared to some of the other events. So the NFT as a ticket, only the second time that's ever happened to me, first time was at the Jabwalkies event and now at Pandemonium. So it's coming together and the NFT was actually useful to get everything that you need. Again, props, I had a good time. Overall, I'll give it maybe a five or six out of 10 just because the, the venue was so large, but a lot of room to grow. I think Can Pie Pandas are here to stay. And I thank you guys for watching again. I love covering these events. I love going to it. I love seeing the growth from last year to where we are today. A lot of the companies that stayed around are taking a, a massive leap of faith and a massive leap of growth and productivity. So until then, I'll see you guys next time.